Hello. Um, in an earlier video I tested this JGY 370 6 volt 10 RPM worm geared motor as a possible servo for controlling the rudder of a, a micro transat boat. Um, and at the time I noticed on eBay that there were other ones that looked very similar except that the output spindle came out on both sides which would be more convenient to me so because I want to put a sensor on one side and the rudder on the other side um, so I ordered one of those uh, from China and here it is one big problem with this new dual spindle motor is that it has much less gearing in it. it. It runs at 150 RPM, which is 15 times faster than this one. Uh, this one runs at about the same speed as a typical model control servo. So this is running 15 times faster and may be more difficult to control because of that. I had hoped that I might be able to swap over the dual spindle it, from the, between these two boxes and get a 10 RPM one with a dual spindle but that turns out not to be the case because the gearing is all, although the gearbox is identical inside the gearing is all different. This video is going to be about the electronics and software needed to control this 150 RPM motor with a reasonable degree of accuracy. So uh, what I've got here is, is a Bourne's rotary shaft encoder I'll show you the spec of that later, but it um, it can measure the position of the shaft to within 0.35 of a degree. Um, there's an annoying amount of backlash in this gearbox, unlike the 10 RPM one, which has a much smaller backlash. That's about seven degrees, uh, and the uh, encoder is connected to a micromite here, and the motor is connected to a MAX 14870 H-bridge here, um, thus enabling the software to drive the motor. Uh, this uh, MAX 14870 is capable of taking a PWM signal uh, and giving a variable amount of drive to the motor, but I'm not using it in that mode. I'm using it either full on or full off. When it's full on it applies either plus 5 volts or minus 5 volts across the motor and when it's full off it short circuits the motor thus uh, giving it inductive braking. Well this is the shaft encoder, a Bourne's EMS 22A. This is available in 5 volt or 3 volt, 3.3 uh, volt versions and I've got the 5 volt version. Uh, the important thing about it is it has a resolution of 1024 positions around the circle which uh, works out to 0.352 degrees uh, for one uh, count. Um, it's uh, specified to run up to 10,000 RPM if necessary, which I very much doubt we shall need that, but it's also specified for 50 million revolutions rotational life, which is uh, uh, nice to know. It has a serial uh, protocol for transferring the data to the microprocessor. And I looked at this and decided that it wasn't quite compliant with the uh, SPI serial uh, protocol. Um, so uh, I started off by using a, a bit banging technique to um, implement the uh, get the data out of the out of the uh, encoder that that worked fine but it was a bit slow so i then tried the built-in spi uh, interface on the micromite and uh, after a bit of fiddling with the four different modes i found one that worked the only thing that uh, doesn't work is it doesn't read the final bit which is a parity bit as the parity is always correct um, i'm not much bothered about that so that's the encoder this is the MAX 14870 full bridge motor driver chip. Um, its block diagram is there. Uh, you can see it's basically an H bridge which can connect uh, 
the power supply, which is I've, I've set to five volts, um, either one way or the other across the motor, or it can short circuit the motor. Um, I'm not using the current sensing or limiting uh, facilities in this at the moment. Um, yes, well, we can we can connect both sides of the motor to ground to short circuit it, uh, in which case inductive braking would take place, or we can connect it one way round or the other way round, uh, full drive. And I'm not using the PWM facilities. The first thing I wondered about this motor was uh, how long does it take to accelerate to full speed? And if you turn it off and uh, short circuit it, how long does it take to slow down to uh, stop? So I did some measurements on that. We have time on the x-axis from the noughties when the power was applied. And uh, on the y-axis we have the shaft angle. So you can see that this is the motor operating at full speed in the middle. This is the start-up ramp, and this is the braking ramp. And uh, the information I got from that is that the uh, starting time was 98 milliseconds, during which time, that is the time from applying power to getting up to full speed, and during that time it, it uh, the shaft moves by 40 degrees. Uh, when it's going full speed, it's actually traveling at 0.7 degrees per millisecond. Uh, when you short turn the power off and short circuit it, it takes 100 milliseconds to slow to zero and uh, passes through another further 34 degrees. So I thought I could use that information to program some software to control this in uh, uh, a hopefully sensible way. As regards the actual algorithm to control this uh, motor, I had a horrid feeling that perhaps I ought to use a highly mathematical closed-loop servo algorithm with appropriate time constants and filters and so on. Um, and there are two reasons why I haven't done that. Although I do have a degree in physics, it was a very long time ago, and I was never very good at maths anyway. Uh, the second reason is that um, I feel that such an algorithm, if optimised, would work very well for a particular condition of the motor and under particular load conditions, but might not cope well with changes as the motor wears uh, and uh, under changing load conditions. So I thought I would uh, do an adaptive software algorithm which might cope with those conditions better. Well, what I've got there is a Micromite program that is generating 10 random shaft angles and driving the motor to those angles at the same time as outputting on the serial console information about what it's doing. And I set the console at 115,200 baud so that the serial line does not delay uh, the uh, microprocessor significantly. Well, afterwards we can take that uh, console log and analyse it to see the performance of the algorithm. Um, the algorithm I was testing at this point is an exceedingly simple one. It simply turns the motor on, monitors the shaft angle, and when the shaft angle gets close to its target, it turns the motor off and applies inductive braking. And if you get the timing of that right, then the motor will coast to a, a halt at the right point. So if we just look at the re first result, this is the first movement of the uh, motor. Um, the motor was initially at about 180 degrees. Um, it says here before 178. The random target that the Micromite generated is, was 247 degrees, which is indicated by this green line. Uh, and um, the red colour indicates full power on the motor. So it starts stationary, accelerates up, and then the cyan, I suppose that is, line indicates braking. Uh, no power, but the motor short-circuited. And um, lo and behold, the error by the time we get to the end is only 1.3 1 1 degrees. So that seems to be um, okay, particularly in view of the fact that the backlash on the motor is 7 degrees. 
And here's another one going the other way. An error of 0.9 degrees. In this case, it, it overshot. Another nice one. This one is not so good because the motor never has time to get up to full speed and we'll address that problem uh, later. That's a slightly more less severe case of the, of the problem I just mentioned. Most of the others are pretty well bang on. Of course we are assuming here that any load on the motor does not enormously affect its performance. There's so much gearing in this thing that probably the actual rudder load is going to be small, but that's something we have to test uh, later. Well, uh, you noticed in the last test run we did, um, there was a problem whenever we asked the motor to move the output shaft by only a small angle. There are probably several reasons for this. Uh, one, the enormous backlash uh, in, in these gears means that it's actually quite possible for the motor and the gears to move quite a long distance without there being any visible movement on the output shaft and therefore the sensor uh, does not record any change. Another reason may well be the uh, angular momentum stored up in the motor and the gears uh, so that if you get it going uh, it's going to go a considerable distance anyway uh, and you may well overshoot uh, your target. So it occurred to me that um, what I should do is try applying a short blip of power to the motor and measuring carefully how far it actually moves on average. And by a short blip I mean a, a just a millisecond of power or two milliseconds. Um, so I, I did that test and uh, I'll show you the results. Well, here is the result. Um, blip duration in milliseconds along the x-axis, shaft movement in degrees along the y-axis. Uh, and um, on average, you see there's quite a good uh, straight line relationship given by this equation here. Um, and what I then do is invert this equation so that uh, it will tell me for a desired shaft move, small shaft movement, what length of blip is desirable to apply to the motor. I'll now show you the results of that algorithm uh, on the graphic displays that we saw before. Uh, I have enormously expanded the Y scale now, so it only runs between 165 and 210 degrees, um, so that you can see what's going on. And, and uh, in this particular example, the software calculates a blip duration which it applies and then breaks and it finds that the final result is not quite near enough so it then gives another blip and another break and gets finally to within 0.6 of a degree. Um, the tolerance on this is one degree uh, so it will go on trying to get close to the, re the target um, so long as the error, final error exceeds a, a degree. There's a very small movement. We're only going to try to reduce here from 208 to 206 degrees, but it has to make a considerable effort doing that. So by and large, this algorithm seems to be working um, acceptably. And so I think if I combine this algorithm with, how many more have we got? Um, with the algorithm I showed before for larger movements, then um, we would have something that begins to look as if it's going to work. Well, that's about as far as I intend to go on this video. Um, 
I don't really want to use this 150 rpm motor with its enormous backlash. It goes too fast and it's too difficult to control because for those reasons. What I really want is this 10 rpm motor with an, a, a, two output shafts. There are other things that I could do. I could perhaps use a toothed wheel like this uh, fit it on there and have the angular sensor on the other end of this belt and then the rudder could come further out here or maybe I could drill a hole here and extend this shaft out this way if I could find a suitable bearing to fit in there. Ideally of course what I want is this 10 rpm gearbox with a dual output shaft and a brushless motor but um, I haven't been able to find that yet, so the world is less than perfect. Anyway, watch this space and thank you for watching.